Hey y'all, hey, Southern Vegan Eats here. Today's video has nothing to do with food, but everything to do with health, and it's mental health. And I'm gonna tell you some things that I personally have been going through, so this is a very personal conversation, but I definitely am the type of person that it makes me feel better to talk about things, to get it out. Um, of course, I've talked about these things with my husband, with my kids, with my sisters, but I'm gonna share it because I feel like sometimes it's also good to journal things and to let other people know what you're going through because they may be going through the same thing maybe experiencing some of the same situations and not really having an idea on how to work through them. So let's get into it. Today's video is about reconnecting with my dad. Um, so I'm going to take it from the very, very top. I'm 46. My dad is 67. I have not seen his face since December of 2000 of December of 1992. I know that specifically because I had had my daughter in August of 92. My grandmother, which is his mother, passed in December of 92, and I saw him at my grandmother's funeral service. Um, he he tried, you know, tried talking with us, me and my two sisters. I have an older sister and a younger sister. And I don't know anybody else's response to that situation. I only recall my own response. Um, also, when I even think back to the memory of what he looked like, I have literally no memory. Um, I think my guard was already up. I was like 17. And this is what I remember from that moment. I remember that he had on a brown suit. I remember that he had on a hat. And I'm telling you, his face was like a potato, meaning like just blank. I don't recall. I have no recollection. I remember him being tall. Um, but I, I could, if somebody asked me to draw a picture of what he looked like from that memory, I would not be able to do it. Okay. So before that time, the last time that I had saw him, I was in the third grade. Now, when I was in the third grade, it was a lot happening, a lot happening. My mother was in prison. My, um, I was living with me and my older sister, we were living with my grandmother, my dad's mom, and my younger sister was living with my aunt. And my dad was also living there. So we were technically living with him, but we were living with my grandmother. And that was my first time, number one, not being taken care of by my mom. Number two, um, being separated from my younger sister even though we were in the same neighborhood so we were on one street in the neighborhood and my sister was i mean when i say less than a half a mile probably less than a quarter of a mile we could walk to, so we saw each other every day you know family my dad's family and my mom's family lived in the same neighborhood um so we like fortunate that our families were right there so y'all this story um so let me think so yeah, third grade would be the last time that I had like a relationship with him. Again, I'm 46. That was third grade. I don't even know how old you are in the third grade. <laughs> so, um, and guess what? It was December of third grade when I saw him. I'm going to have to pull out a calendar and do math on that so I can, you know, y'all can do math too and find out what year it was because I didn't fail any grades. I was in the right grade. <laughs> um... So, December of that year of third grade, we had a Christmas play at school, and my grandmother took us, and um, during the play, so all my neighborhood that I grew up in, it was a black neighborhood. Everybody in the neighborhood literally was relatives to me and my sisters because my dad's family, it was almost like a family neighborhood. My dad's family lived there. My mom's family came from South Carolina, I'm from North Carolina, and they moved to North Carolina into this neighborhood. And so they were the only ones in the neighborhood that wasn't connected to anybody as far as family. Everybody else in that, I cannot think of one house in the neighborhood where somebody wasn't my cousin, my aunt, my uncle, somebody was related to us in every house because of my grandmother's side of the neighborhood. It was a family neighborhood. Lots of people, lots of family. Um, I don't even know where I was going with that. <laughs> so there's so much, it's so much. I'm just trying to give you like a idea of how things were in the neighborhood, right? 
Um, so my mom's sister, that's where my youngest sister was staying with my mom's sister. And um, my mom's parents also, like I said, they live in the neighborhood. And my aunt, my, my mom's parents, they had a second house behind their house on their second set of property. So my aunt lived in that house with her family and my grandparents. So we, we alternated going to church with everybody. Um, anywho, the night, of, that's why I was going. So in December of third grade, we had our Christmas play. And our grandparents took us to the Christmas play. And my dad was supposed to come to the Christmas play and meet us there and, you know, support us because it's Christmas play. And so we're at the play and, um, you know, you're singing during people are acting. We just had to sing. I remember that. And I've been dating yourself. I don't know how old you guys are, but we uh, hope. I think people still have Christmas plays. I don't know. My kids haven't had one in quite some time, definitely since elementary school. But anywho, so we were doing our Christmas songs. And then after the play, he never showed up. We went home um and there were cop cars like everywhere in the neighborhood right and so no cell phones were there cell phones were not a thing right um not to the point not the way they are now that's what i should say my mom's mom had a cell phone in her car but she was she was bougie <laughs> i loved her um so anywho there were no cell phones there was no way to like have like uh that type of quick communication if you know what i'm trying to say so cop cars were everywhere. Um, so we got back to our house in the neighborhood. And I'm trying to remember if my granddad was with us, meaning my it was my dad's stepdad. I'm trying to remember, but he was the only granddad we knew. I'm trying to remember if he was with us at the play. I can't really remember. You know, it's a long time ago, but definitely my grandmother was there. So we go inside um, and she's just like, everything is normal, right? It's kind of late. You're getting back from the school play. You get your shower. You say your prayers, you go to bed. That's it. So that's what we did. And then the next morning we woke up. We didn't see my dad, which normally we would see him in the mornings. In the evening, it was no big deal because it was time for bed. So it was like, you know, even though I do remember being kind of upset that he didn't come to the Christmas play, it wasn't like I was about to go confront him because I was just like, oh, well, he didn't show up. Maybe he had to work late. I don't know. Um. So then the next day we get on the school bus with our cousins, like I said, and everybody is like, oh, your dad evaded the police. They didn't say evaded because that's a big word for now. They're like, your dad was jumping roadblocks and he was running from the police. You ain't gonna never see your daddy again, blah, blah, blah. You know, just going in. And I was like, oh, this is terrible. This is embarrassing. This is like your mama's in prison. Now your daddy about to be in prison. It was terrible. It was terrible. So, um... You know, you think back over a time and you realize a lot of things mold you to be the person that you become without you having any say in it at the time. We have to get to a place where we're in control of the things that we do, even though there are things that led us to those places that we never wanted to be in. And so that was a hard day. It was a hard week even. The only thing, I think the only saving grace to that week was that um, it was about to be Christmas break. Even though we lived in the neighborhood with all of our cousins and they could still tease us, it was still at least about to be Christmas break so we weren't going to be in school. And that was it, y'all. That was it. There was no conversation about it with my grandparents. There was nothing. There was nothing like, where is your dad? Where Your dad is here, your dad. There was nothing. There was no updates. It was just like, oh, well, nobody talked about it. Nobody said anything about it. That's really weird. And so, um, for the next... You know, fifth, I don't know. 10th, um, third grade, so maybe like the next six or seven years, however many years that is, um, there was no communication, no nothing until my grandmother passed. So with that being said, that just that's just showing you 
how the timeline kind of played out. And then there was one other time in the last 29 years that we had a connection. So my uncle, which is my dad's brother, um, we have always been really close with him. We've always had great um, relationship with him. And he lives not in North Carolina, but anywho. Um, so we've had a great relationship with him. He's always kept in contact with us. Um, family vacations. We go and visit him. He's He has been an outstanding uncle and part of our lives. Right? All the way through. Um, so... And he's older than my dad. He's the oldest. There's three. My dad has two brothers. One of them passed away. And then um, my uncle that that is the oldest. But so my dad is the youngest. Okay, so the middle brother passed away. And when my other uncle was alive, we even went and stayed with him one um like I think it was definitely spring break. We went and stayed with him and his kids and wife. And so it was a kind of odd situation to be spending all this time with our family but not having any connection with our dad my grandmother owned a thrift store so i would go with her as i grew up in my teenage years i worked at a thrift store with her and i would go with her to buy stuff for the store um and uh we, we were just a very close family with them and like i said to have no connection with him was very odd okay uh, so, anywho, when I was an adult and remarried to my current husband, um, at that point I had three kids. Uh, and so it had to be in 2004 because my youngest son, no, it may have been even after that. It was between 2004 and 2006. Uh, that my uncle because i'm giving y'all a lot of backstory i hope you're keeping up i'm kind of all over the place i'm trying to make it make sense in a timeline chart uh my uncle had called us and he said that my dad was at his house and so did we want to speak with him and all three of us were at my mom's so or maybe my young my older sister might not have been there but me and my younger sister were definitely there and then we spoke we somehow got my other sister on the line anyways we all talked with him asked him some questions and at that point my heart wasn't hardened towards him because I was more mature I was older I was like you know I have kids let's see what he has to say right and so he was saying that he wanted to be back in our lives and you know he was sorry that he hadn't been in our lives and he wanted to meet his grandkids and things like that and everything was like oh this sounds good so let's give this a go so we gave him our phone numbers. I don't even recall if we got his phone number, if he had a phone number. Because again, cell phones were just becoming a thing then. And I definitely don't think he had a cell phone. Um, so, are just becoming super big. That's why I should say they were already a thing, but they were becoming super big. Um, so, we gave him our numbers and everything and we never heard from him again. <laughs> so at that point probably just a couple of months into never hearing from him again my heart was hardened again I was just like you know I'm not doing this I'm not I put up all the walls I was like I am not putting myself or my kids in the line of danger to have be broken hearted by someone who has never been there for me it just doesn't make sense whatever I'm good over here so at that point I literally decided I'm done I'm done. I'm not doing this again. So, and I also had decided, this is maybe going to sound a little crazy <laughs> now that I've done the work. I had decided I was never going to forgive him because I felt like that's, I'm not forgiving him. Why do I need to forgive him? And trust me when I tell y'all, I know forgiveness is for you and not for the other person. But I didn't care about that. I was just like, I'm not forgiving him. And in my mind, I was like, I don't have to forgive him. I don't even think about him. I don't care. And so I had built up this whole um, thing in my head where why do I have to forgive him? Forgiveness, yeah, it may be for me, but guess what? It's also for him and he doesn't deserve it. That's how I felt. And so I was like, whatever, I'm not doing it. And my husband would talk to me about it probably like once or twice a year, if that often, and be like, uh, baby, ever think about it? Don't talk to me about that man and don't call him my dad. His name is Gilbert. <laughs> so, um, that's, but that is my reality. That's how hardened my heart was towards him. 
And then in 2020, December, something about December, y'all, um, I have been working on the lesson of forgiveness in Bible study with my um, youngest sister, right? And so I did the first lesson and I was like, I know, I don't need to be forgiven, right? And so I didn't feel any reason to forgive him. I still was like, mm, this is not working for me. <laughs> so I was like, I need to do this. I need to do another lesson. So I, I continued to work on forgiveness, uh, reading, studying, meditating, praying, and trying to literally soften my heart towards him so that I could forgive him. He's the only person in my entire life that I've ever had a hardened heart towards and that I could not forgive. So finally, like I said, in December, I had a breakthrough and I felt so free and so clear and so like, oh my goodness, forgiveness really is for me. <laughs> Forgiving others is really for me. I felt so different. Uh, so I totally forgiven him and I felt great about it. So that was December of 2020. And then lo and behold, December of 2021, the relationship reconnection started. So I'm going to leave this video here and I'll pick up on how things are going in my next video because this is already long enough. But just know this is video one of the reconnection with my dad after 29 years.